Welcome everybody to that time of the week when I review something that I have absolutely no idea what this is. Well, I kind of do. This is the M48 GAU-8. This is essentially a 1950s tank with a A10 Thunderbolt 2's gun strapped onto the turret. The turret given some extra armour and it's been told to delete people faster than boy bands delete middle-aged single women's bank accounts when it comes to purchasing tickets. This thing completely lacks any kind of subtlety, agility, maneuverability, speed, flexibility, armour, firepower, penetrating things frontally, stealth, view range, and literally gets shot by everybody in the team, and like I said before, what it gets in return is the ability to absolutely decimate people who even show their side armour, and god forbid a TD or an AFE, or even a light tank comes near you. This is the second tier 10 on the British commander, Oscar Faraday's line, and it comes after the TTB, which comes after the M1A2, which is not on this line. This doesn't play anything like the TTB, as this is basically classified as a TD, but in all honesty, it might as well just be an MBT, because it is basically an MBT that isn't an MBT. Actually, I I wouldn't really classify this as anything. I would I would just classify this thing as BERT, because that's what it does, it just BERTs things all day. So, anyway, this tank will set you back around 30 million to buy, and even more if you wish to fully upgrade this thing, and it does have quite a few upgrades. The first thing it does, it has a bunch of smoke grenades, which gives you two rounds. It can be pretty useful because this thing literally doesn't have any camo. And it has a nice bit of firepower as well. The improved weapon cooler system reduces your barrel overheat rate by 5% and your barrel cooling rate is increased by 20. And you do get an improved mount with a max spread when firing is improved by 50. Turret traverse doesn't affect overall accuracy and your aim time will be reduced by 20%. This doesn't really seem to matter that much, but a bigger engine is always nice as well and that's it, apart from the ability to get a universal retrofit slot and Douglas O'Reilly. Now, compared to other tanks in the game, um, you can't. Um, this, I, 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 I honestly can't compare this to anything else because they don't function like this. Um, what it does have is a 25 damage, but generally speaking, that's quite a lie. Um, this thing's um, ammunition has a salvo size of 3000, a burst rate fire of 42,000, and a bonus module damage of 50%. Now, there is two fire modes to this. One of them is a, um, a long burst, which does 65 damage and is most useful for when you want to... Um, destroy high value targets so when you're going to be an extended firefight and the other one gives you a lot more damage 135 damage to be exact and gives you around 4000 damage worth and gives you the ability to emergency delete people such as if a centaur 120 rushes you or a sphinx or you just want to get behind an object 490 and tell him to go fuck himself before running away cackling like a madman apart from that defense wise um with Vincent and Alicia, this thing will have 20, 28,056 hit points, which is quite nice, but the hull and turret generally sucks. Mobility-wise, this is basically an M48, so you won't really expect much. You're slow, you're fat, you weigh a lot. You're basically an American, I guess. <laughs> Utility-wise, 70% camo, literally awful. The Object 490 has 1% less. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure... Oh, it's only got 1% more camo than the Object 490 and the T15. So, yeah, good luck. Good luck with not being spotted. Um, thankfully though, there is quite a bit of um, range for view range and stuff on the move. Um, there's quite a wide range of retrofits and stuff you can take. And the gun depression of minus 10 degrees is okay with a 36 degree upwards. And this thing can be happily taken into just about any game mode, provided you follow the three basic steps, which is hide, find target, shoot target, and the occasional fourth step, which is survive shooting your target, because in PvP, everybody will shoot you, in globs, everyone will shot you, and in PvE, there's always more than one target shooting you, so, yeah. This is very much more of a meme tank. Now, there are a couple of commanders you can take. So far, my favourite has been taking Vincent, 
which gives you a pretty nice boost to everything. Um, the hit points is very welcome, as well as giving you some aiming speed and everything, and the fire safety. Generally speaking, MBT commanders do quite well in this. Um, you could use Cortez for dealing max damage, but I wouldn't really say that. There is the option to take Alicia, um, with the ability to simply stack more ammo on and have the Mysterious Stranger, but, you know. Um, there's also the choice of Vincent for the ability to delete people's crew members, but generally speaking, what you really want to take for the absolute hilarity is going to be Erin, which transforms your tank into what is essentially a railgun, an autocannon railgun. There's also the option to take Fedor or Maximilian Koenig for some nice repair speed and aim speed as well. Um, and lastly, well, we're not even lastly there. Um, I have enjoyed taking Joshua Seagrove, using this thing in drops as a sniper is actually pretty damn decent. Gives you some camera factor improve while shooting, and overall spinking, quite a nice TD commander. There is also the option to take um, Sabrina Washington, who will help you with the module damage, and this does tend to help quite a lot in spec ults with hitting the MRX of vehicles and stuff. Um, especially with the new ones with the um, swarm with the train meshing, it can get a little bit dicey, so it's probably best to use that. And then lastly, you could always use Victor for the ability to just... Well, you know what Victor's used for at this point. Aside from that, cruise skill wise I do um, recommend Acceleration Off-Road Terrain, and probably going to be overall accuracy while moving is increased by 10%. Simply put, the ability to actually hit things is good, um, accuracy to KO while firing is, in, is improved by 23%, and then probably sharpshooter or quick draw. Pretty standard, pretty box standard crates there and stuff. Um, and then lastly, retrofits wise, there is a wide range of things you can do. You could take the survivability kit, but that you're basically a punch bag to begin with. There's also taking the AI targeting, ballistic aiming computer, MRS. I wouldn't really recommend the gun breach, but the improved drive and the improved barrel lining could help as well. And then lastly, improved filter systems does help this thing shift. Active thermal camera, and you also have the spot in as well. So there is quite a few range of options to take this thing. I would recommend taking this into PVE first, simply to figure out how everything does, and then move into PVE, into PVP slash gobs from that. This is a really weird tank to play. So um, let's have a look at some games. So, welcome to a game on Salzburg with me and the Gawait. And um, what we're going to see is that uh, some of my own team and some of the enemy are going to be referred to as potential victims. Now, um, as you can see compared to some other tanks, this is a very, very tall thing. And to be honest, I haven't even bothered showing the armor layout at this point, as this can literally be penetrated by just about everything. So, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the safe option, which is to go where that Poland is. Now we have a Centaur 120 who is happily deleting people, but you know, that's that's up to him. If he wants to do it, then so be it. And I probably decide it's likely not the best idea to go after that guy there. So a bit of a dick in that Centaur over here, and he's going to start shooting me. We hit an ally. We killed an ally. Fire. He was purple. And to be honest, he kind of deserved it. But there you go. First victim of the day is a piece of shit player who started team killing people. We've lost a corner in the world at this point. But you know what? Who really cares? I certainly don't. And we're just going to see if we can make some enemy into victims. And you can see there I am incredibly good at this. Um, I believe I was using Freya for this one. Yes. This was the Freya build, which is basically maximum accuracy, and it could be quite funny. You see, it's even bigger than the Poland at this point. I've jet 490 down there, but um, I can't deal with him. The only way you can re really deal with a lot of MBTs is just to go for, from the side or from the rear. Um, but for now, the Girl 8 has a very unique playstyle in which you literally sometimes have to throw yourselves at people in an effort to immediately delete them. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't, but overall it can be a bit of a fucking laugh for when you actually manage to pull it off. So that pollen ball's gonna start running into the enemy there, and uh, well, um, fuck it. Oh hey, there's an object 640 over there, you ready? Victim spotted. <laughs> oh, that's pretty fast, 200 damage. 
<laughs> Bye, object. How are you? <laughs> oh, anyway, that's that's one victim. This is with the um, the higher damage upgrade, which is um, symbolised by the big button there. Um, these do around about 114 to about 100 to 135 damage per hit, and they're ideal for situations such as that. Um, otherwise, the 65 damage can be useful, but not always, as the lesser damage and the fact you have to expose yourself more. You basically have the expose yourself less kind of pop out build, which is with the um, 135 damage and the more of a longer sustained support burst, which is the 65 damage rounds. Now, they both fire at the same speed, it's just the amount of damage they do and how quickly they call up the spool. Um, the spool of which you may have noticed goes up very quickly. So, there's uh, going to be an enemy TTB over there who everybody has finally killed. Excellent. And now we're just going to keep on trundling away. I don't believe I'm going to use the 65 damage in this game or not, simply because this is quite a close environment and you don't really want to um, hamper yourself by taking longer to kill people. Um, I genuinely do prefer that. Oh hey 90 mess, how's it going? You see the little spool thing next to the hit point bar? Yeah, if that goes all the way up you have to reload. But, as you can see there, um, only 900 damage done to that 90 mess. Could have been better, could have been worse. There's a crab over there that I could have shot at, but I was confident in these guys' ability to shoot him. Now let me see if I can shoot this Poland ball. Hey Poland! <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, and I killed a crab as well. It's <laughs> lovely, isn't it? But yeah, the fun is just beginning because there's going to be a Wilk, there's going to be an M113 Hellfire who's going to change his luck, he's going to start throwing missiles at me, um, he's going to regret it. He is going to regret his spaghetti so much. And um, this thing also sounds different in first person, it does in third person mode, so if you can, fire this thing in third person to hear the absolutely wonderful Burton sound. Is he spotted yet? No? No? Yes? No? Walk over there, walks going for the TTB, walks on 500 hit points. Hey Hellfire, how's it going? Brr. Yep, bye bye. As a note, if you're in an um, if you're in an unarmored vehicle, uh, the correct way to um, kill a um, gal is not to go near it. As seen by Mr. Wolf over there. And there is a Cornet who unfortunately Kills me, but you know that's eleven thousand damage done. So uh, let's have a look at the post-game stats for that one. So here you go, nine thousand six hundred and forty-five damage done to the enemy. A very good haul for a game, actually. Um, there's forty-two damage to the crab. I'm unsure how that happened, but oh well. Oh, that was just a kill. <laughs> anyway. As you can see here, um, most of these vehicles were taken out in a single burst um, with the, uh, the 125, sorry, the 135 damage rounds. So you can see here a rough idea of what usually it's going to be. Um, top of the team, of course, our team did unfortunately lose that game. Um, a grand total of 816 shots fired with 282 misses. You will be missing a lot, so it is important to keep those bursts short or to simply override and fire off as much as you can in order to kill people. Not many damage was taken, so, well, 628 damage bounced. I believe that was from the Wilk, and in all honesty, going to die. Now, um, when it does come to this thing's armor model, it is basically completely trash. While it says it can't pen itself from the front, um, these depleted uranium rounds do do damage to armor that is thicker, but this could often be doing like 5mm, well 5 damage to a single target with the um, higher damage round, so it's not really worth it most of the time, but as you can see here it's basically trash, 300mm turret, 400mm, well 360mm upper plate, 200 lower plate, everything's going to go through you, um, I think the Sphinx's autocannon might be able to find it, I am... 
yeah, congratulations, you can be painted by auto cannons frontally, and pretty much missiles as well will go through you like a hot paper bag, so no protection whatsoever. Um, and let's have a look at the next game. Now, um, same map again, um, and this is simply because uh, this was only the other the only other map I was able to get, well, the only other game I was able to get where I actually had a good game of the Gal 8. Um, this is very much feels to be an all or nothing tank in terms um, of what you can do with it. Either you kill something or it kills you. No armor, sorry, no armor, no camo, no mobility, no nothing except this thing's giant ass gun and heady. Fuck you, heady. Heady rams me off the thing and so does this. Griffin as well, this is actually taller than, this is actually one of the tallest vehicles, it might even be the tallest vehicle in the game. There's me simply annoying Heady over there, um, and we're going to see how this thing does when it comes to other aspects. Now, with this thing's ridiculous burst fire, this does mean that you are able to fire into bushes, um, to bush lines, pretty easily. Um, it's not like other order cannons which have a slow rate of fire, this is 3000 RPM, which means you can quickly shoot a line of bushes, see if anybody moves, see if they don't, that kind of thing. So it does have its uses, but it is kind of hard to say, do you take this over a T-15? Because you do do bit of module damage to that Sphinx over there. Guy's a little bit annoyed at me, wasn't shooting at you dude. Um, Shit, there's an object 490 over there. Um, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Um, and as you can see, that you can do like a little bit of damage to enemy vehicles, but 73 isn't going to help it. And that's an object 490, which can literally take off like 40% of my hit points with a single shot. So probably best to um, to not pick a fight with him. Now there's going to be that Sphinx over there. The question is, what can I do to him? And you're going to see what exactly this thing can do in a single burst. Are you ready? Identify. Oh hey, there's more than one of them. Oh no, hi Griffin, hi Sphinx. <laughs> that's um... That's a thousand done to a Griffin and 1200 done to a Sphinx in... Not that much time. And the only reason why we wasn't able to do more was because of the burst damage. Uh, that dragon's not going to enjoy that either. Um, and unfortunately you see the utility of using the burst damage there is that the cooldown does last a while. Now other enemies are still going to be lying around. Um, I did do quite a good amount of damage to those guys um, and hopefully I'm going to be able to poke out because if I can shoot those snipers on the ridge there we'll figure out pretty quickly where they are. Um, so he's still down there. I think he's been a little bit too aggressive I think. But then again, who's a Sphinx? When do they not do that? K21 over there. Now, I was searching to see if that's a Tarl will be over there, so I do miss a shot on that K21. Sent. Yeah, they've. Yeah, that sent's dead. So let's see if we can concentrate on the rest of them. Um, be mindful of your targets and being able to see them. Soft skin vehicles is preferable due you know, to the low hit points and the fact that you should be able to murder them relatively quickly. You see me now um, shoot in. Parts of the wood. So you go again. Um, shooting at fallen trees with enemy packs out of them is actually quite a good idea. And 1200 RPM for an auto cannon is pretty nice. So simply just wait in. Um, you can spray and pay into woods. See, tree over there. Single burst. I'm sure if I'll do much damage, but the fact that there's a gal right there and a lot of um, AFEs and lightning vehicles are starting to know what this thing can do to them, it can at the very least manage to fall off. They go tree snap. Don't think I did any damage. Might have been, say, their Ramka. Um, to which, if it is, not going to do any damage. No, it isn't the Ramka. Oh, 104 damage. That's quite good, actually. This can actually go for the lower plate of a Terminator. But long range, it can and will suffer. So most of the time, you're short to doing um, short bursts of fire. Now, um, taking Vincent gives me about an extra 300 to 400 hit points, which is better um, and can help the survivability of this thing quite a lot. Uh, you could take Douglas O'Reilly by K21, um, which 
gives this more hit point boost, but overall speaking, the guy makes you lose even more camouflage. And 17% isn't great, but if you take all of his stuff, you'll be left with like 7 or even less, and that's not something you want to do. I do fall off here. Um, I believe Hedy was watching at this point, and he was very enthusiastic about what went on. Also, hi, Will, how are you? Um, it can do a little bit more than um, 135 damage, around 171 and a half. I think I've seen it done 200, but that depends on the um, thickness of the enemy armor. I believe it kind of functions like a heat MP round for dealing damage to armor thicker than it, and it also has a bonus damage to armor thinner. It's um, quite a weird shell, and I believe reading the article for it from the game should be able to help it out. Um, that guy should be able to kill him. Sphinx over there. Sphinx is still alive. A couple of enemies. Griffin. Spitfire, don't, don't. <laughs> well done, Spitfire. So we're going to speed up the game here. Um, generally speaking, not much goes on here except for the fact that they've got a Wilk. No, they keep spawning in and out of territory. Um, I do keep chasing after him, not recommended to do an M48, but it is quite funny. This is this is still a pretty fucking funny tank to use to play and to, um, all. Uh, being against this thing, if you're in an MBT, most of the time you can simply face tank these things. I wouldn't recommend getting in balling distance unless you can ram them, um, as if it gets around your side, you're going to be in a world of hurt. So mid-range combat or going hold down against this is quite viable. Um, for light skin vehicles, Cornet Sphinxes, um, Wilkes, you do have like a massive camo advantage over an M48 and you should be able to shoot it without being spotted, so do that. Um, and the T15 of course has the ridiculous burst fire. Um, so there are ways to take it out. T8 especially can do the same. So this thing does have quite a lot of weaknesses and it's not really a serious vehicle to play. We have tried playing in Spec Ops, but this could be worse. Oh, hi, Wilk. Oh, no, Wilk dies. And that's all there is going to be for this game. It's basically a slot to get the rest of the guys. So let's have a look at those juicy, juicy, juicy post game stats. So for this match, um, 8,278 damage done. Um, and as you can see, some pretty nice blind shots done um, specifically to the UK-21 and some other tanks there, which is always quite nice. Blind shots are quite doable in this, and hey, we have a lot of ammo, so might as well. Um, we did win this match. Um, it was actually quite funny how this match went on. Um, basically, we had a giant blockade of tanks trying to rush in to kill the XM-1A3 and their T-90 mass, so they ended up getting a bunch of free kills with the Merkava killing them all. Um, total potential... Sorry, total potential damage that would have been around 13,000, but some of that probably would have been done by simply shooting the tougher upper front armor of MBTs. So, that was with um, Douglas O'Reilly. Um, and he's not really that useful, so I wouldn't really recommend him. So, generally speaking, the M48 is not a serious tank. It's not a tank you should play meta, but is it fun? Yeah, it's fun. Is it worth the price? Is the fun worth the price? If you have 600 million credits lying around, you might as well get one. But if you're looking to, you know, have something that can actually carry you through games on a consistent basis, then probably not this thing. This is just a mean tank. Same as with the 490, same as with quite a few tanks in the game, same as with the MTLB. It's a fun tank for you to dick around with, with, with your friends and see how many people you can murder. <laughs> that's, uh, that's about it, really. So, um, yeah, take care, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this little overview of the M48 Galway. I'm sorry for my voice. I'm actually um, on about 35 hours of sleep at this point, so I'm going to try and nap. Um, so, take care, everyone, and I'll see you all next time for hopefully the M113 Hellfire review. Bye.